Hello, welcome back to part two of a two-part blog that I'm doing on controlling the visibility of sketches in Inventor drawing views based on whether the sketch is visible in the model. Just a quick recap on this. Why would we need to control sketches in this way? Well, it's for people who are doing probably more advanced iLogic configurable models. If I bring up an iLogic form here, We've got here the ability to switch the door opening from left to right in this particular model and we're controlling the visibility of a sketch. This is a commonly recognized symbol for showing which way the door opens. It's, it's, uh, it's easy enough to turn that sketch on and off to toggle between those sketches in the model environment but um, making sure the drawing also shows the sketches that you've turned on or off correctly is another bit of code. So we looked at setting the model sketches with the last blog and with this blog we're looking at setting the drawing sketches to reflect and to, to be linked to and match whether or not the model sketch is visible. And then we should have the whole package to um, only set the configuration once in the model and not have to repeat ourselves in the drawing. So. Um, we're moving into the drawing environment now so we'll be looking at the same example parts and assemblies that we did before we've got a single part file here which, which we can toggle left and right opening um, and the assembly file as well um, we can also toggle that left and right so we're going to place we're going to uh, open a, a new drawing file um, and we're going to place some base views in this drawing of probably of both the assembly and the part file. So uh, I'll just scale this one down a bit. Uh, let's, I probably will have to scale that down a bit. Uh, let's scale it here. Okay. Right, okay, some beautiful drawing views there, um, but of course no sketches showing. Um, let's create another sheet uh, before we look at what's going on here. So I'm going to hit new sheet and uh, in the first drawing I placed um, the assembly. In the second sheet I'm going to place the part file that I've also got open. Okay, I'll just place some similar drawing views. It doesn't matter too much which, what views I'm placing here. And I probably don't want hidden lines showing either. Okay, so uh, we've got an assembly here and a single part file here. We want to show those um, those drawing those uh, model sketches in here. So manually, this is this is quite cumbersome to do. What we have to do is we have to go down in the uh, in the drawing browser here, find the part that's got the sketches in it, right click and say get model sketches, and then we can uh, see the sketch in here. Of course, if we try and get the model sketch in the wrong view. It won't display because the sketch has to be perpendicular to the drawing view. So we won't be able to do it in this view, for instance. If I check down in here and try and get model sketches here, I won't see anything because obviously it's not perpendicular. And same same goes for this one as well, of course. Um, if I try and do it in the isometric view, I won't be able to see them. The sketch has to be perpendicular to the current drawing view. So you can imagine if you've got a lot of um, parts or assemblies um, it might be quite tricky to turn them all on and off. Uh, I'll show you this perhaps in a second. So let me just hit undo. I'm hitting uh, Control Z to undo a few times and uninclude that uh, drawing uh, model sketch. And let's go into the uh, the part sheet over here. Again, we'd have to do a similar thing. We'd have to right click on the, um, the blog part and get model sketches in there. But I'm going to hit undo and we want to do that automatically. OK, so um, what I'm simply going to do is to run this iLogic rule, which is going to match the visibility of the drawing and the model sketches. It's quite a uh, it's quite a long-winded rule, so we're not going to look at what it's actually doing here. 
we're just going to check that it works and run it. So I'm going to hit run rule and that should only then turn on the sketches that are available um, in uh, perpendicular to the view. But it should do it in both, uh, sorry, excuse me, in all of the drawing sheets as well as all of the views in the drawing. Let's just prove this by making some changes to the model and then the model should update. Uh, sorry, excuse me, the drawing should update as well. So if I go back to the assembly here, let's uh, bring up the form. You know, we can change the width if we want. Let's change the width there. Um, and let's change the opening from left to right. Okay, let's hit done. Let's go into the part file. Let's uh, change the opening from left to right. So both of these arrows are now pointing to the right now. Okay, but if we go back to our drawing, the arrows in both sheets are still pointing to the left. Okay, because we haven't um, included the right um, model sketches here. Let me just show you again how this works. Um, you can see we've only included the left hand model sketch with the code here. So what we need to do is we need to run that rule again and we won't worry too much again about how it works but we want both of those arrows to turn to the right here okay so that one's worked and if I go to the first drawing sheet that one has worked as well and let me just illustrate um, another use of this of course it it should work for any drawings uh, any model sketches whether they're visible or not excuse me um, should work for any model sketches regardless of what view you're talking about here. So if I go back into the assembly or let's try it in the part file actually. Um, if I go to the part file and if I choose another sketch like this one on the side here for instance, let's turn on that sketch and let's go into the drawing. I'm going to expect to see that sketch in this view now in the drawing. Uh, for the part file that is, so if I go into the part sheet and if I run that again, because that sketch is visible in the model, it's now been made visible in the drawing as well. Um, let's try it on the assembly. So let me uh, just go into um, any one of these. I mean, if I just try this for instance, let's uh, let's just turn on, turn on both sketches, head back to the drawing, um, head back to the assembly thing here. If I run the rule again, I expect to see both of those sketches on here. Okay, so that works fine. Just as one last check, if we've got lots of uh, assemblies in a, uh, in a drawing, how does it work with that? Well, let's, let's try this. So if I, um, if I reset this assembly back to what it was before, let's hit done. Let's create ourselves a new assembly. And let's place in a few of these. So if we're going to uh, copy this assembly, let's place a load of these in here. Um, I could just pattern a few of them. And let's pattern them by, I think it's 800 millimeters now, isn't it? Okay, and let's place in one of the uh, parts as well. So let, let's maybe turn off this display of that side sketch as well. And let's copy and paste that part file into here as well. Okay, so slightly strange looking layout we've got here, but it should allow us to see what's going on at least. So if I save that, Let's call that assembly three. And now if I place a view of assembly three in my drawing, let's create another drawing sheet. Let's create a base view. It's okay, so currently, oh, we're gonna have to flip that round. Let's try flipping that around. Okay, so currently we can't see the drawing sketches, but if we run this rule, we would expect to see the 
excuse me, the model sketches in here reflect what has happened in the uh, in the model. So let's run that, and we can see that has updated successfully, and it should run nice and quick as well. Okay, hope you find really this uh, this really useful. I'm going to uh, put this uh, this code. It should work as general purpose code um, suitable for any um, any models and drawings. Let me know if you have any issues with it and I hope you find this very enjoyable. Thanks a lot.